good place um, and as you can tell I'm back in my happy place in the kitchen. Uh, the oven is fixed, it was a switch that I knocked while I was getting my spices out of the cupboard down here. Uh, so that's a little embarrassing, but uh, I'm back and doing some baking, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. Um, happy Easter. By the time you see this, um, editing will probably take a couple of days because I'm still getting the hang of it. But um, I hope you had a really lovely time. I hope that you got some nice chocolate eggs and I hope that most importantly had a chance to connect with your family and friends because I think we all know that that's the most important thing. Um, so, on Instagram, if you are following the third place, um, the has a three, um, you will have seen that I made a poll to see what we were going to bake. So I knew I wanted to make something with chocolate, it is Easter after all, um, and in the past the two things that I bake the most often are brookies, which are like a soft squidgy brownie cookie, a recipe that was given to me by a really good friend called Sarah or my chocolate brownies, which I've made for various birthdays, celebrations, and just as a bit of a treat. A recipe that I learnt um, during a year working in my friend's deli, so hi Lou. Um, and yeah, it was quite a convincing win for the brownies. I think out of the 70 odd votes that I had, 95% of them were for brownies, so that's what we're gonna have a go at making. Okay, so a couple of basics to get you started. This recipe is going to take around an hour to bake and then you, what you want to do is leave it overnight ideally, still in the tin and then it continues to bake. By doing that you ensure that the brownies are really lovely and moist. You don't want a dry brownie, nobody likes dry brownies. Um, other things to know, uh, I always make sure that if I'm baking my ingredients are all the same temperature, so everything's room temperature, eggs and butter, it just really helps the process and especially if you're making sponges it always seems to make a massive difference. Um, it's a bit of a given but make sure your oven's preheated. For this recipe I've got a fan oven so it's preheated at 180 degrees but if you've got a regular oven or I'll need to check the gas mark conversion, but a, another electric oven without a fan would be about 200 degrees. I don't know if you can tell, I probably seem a little bit perkier today. I actually haven't eaten chocolate or cake or biscuits, apart from the tea loaf that I made a couple of weeks ago, um, or anything pretty much sugary for the last 40 days and 40 nights, which is technically 46 days and 46 nights. Um, and I had half a flake this morning and uh, yeah, having a bit of a sugar rush. For your ingredients, you are going to need 300 grams of dark chocolate and 300 grams of unsalted butter, then five large eggs, free range, obviously, and also 450 grams of castor or granulated sugar, and then finally 200 grams of plain flour. Other than that, it's really just a case of whatever else you want to put in there. So if you've got some leftover Easter eggs, that might be quite nice. Uh, in my case, I'm going to be using the zest and some segments of an orange and also a dark chocolate orange as well. I might add some more milk chocolate pieces that I have in there, but yeah, let's see how that turns out. So the way this recipe works is that you have three elements that get combined together. So the first one is your 300 grams of dark chocolate and your 300 grams of unsalted butter. So this is a really simple bain-marie method. All I have is a large saucepan. Obviously the glass bowl isn't going anywhere near the water. If I'm really careful with the steam here, you can see the water's way down at the bottom. So I keep that on a really low heat and let those melt together. I don't mess with it too much. One of the tricks with chocolates is to not bother it. Just let it kind of sit and do its thing. So I'll come back and show you this when they're melted together and how I combine them. If you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of sugar. Yep, you are absolutely right. That's around a pound in old money or almost half a kilogram. <laughs> This recipe really requires a lot of whisking. So if you feel bad about kind of the exercise portion of it, just think about all that sugar we just put in there. It's time to start the mixing. The consistency that we're looking for with the egg and sugar mixture is that it should run smoothly from the back of a wooden spoon. So that's pretty good. 
I've weighed out the plain flour. I'm going to add in around half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. Now the flour is weighed out, um, we have a little bit of time. The butter and the chocolate are still melting. It's going to take probably another five or ten minutes to do that. So I'm going to start zesting my orange. And one of the things I'm going to do is use the segments of the orange as well. You don't have to bother with this, but just with it being Easter, I want to make it a little bit extra special. The butter and the chocolate are starting to melt together really nicely now, so we get that lovely silky consistency. Um, I'm going to leave that again for another few minutes, don't need to do much there. Just to note, if you're ever melting chocolate, um, you can do it in a microwave. Um, I just prefer to do it on the hob where I have a little bit more control, I can keep an eye on it. Also, for this recipe, we're going to be adding the egg and sugar mixture into this bowl as well, so having a really big bowl to start with is a good idea. That's actually really hard work because my hands are too small to hold the orange. <laughs> Maybe I was a little bit over eager with the size of my uh, citrus fruit. Back to it. Now we have our three elements. We have our butter and chocolate, which is beautifully melted. We have our sugar and eggs that are really nicely combined. It's going to need a little bit of a whizzle up. And we have our plain flour and salt ready to combine the two. So I hope you've brought your muscles because it's time to get whiskey. You don't want to add too much mixture at a time, just a little bit, make sure it's really well combined. Add a little bit more, mix some more. You get the idea. <laughs> like that it would be perfectly lovely maybe add in some nuts or some crushed biscuits as soon as the mixture was ready I added in the zest and the segments from the orange because they were quite large segments I actually split them in two so that there was more I've added them in at this stage because I think it'll help to get them spread consistently through the brownie and be quite difficult to kind of push them in later on I've also added another couple of handfuls of the chocolate galettes that I used originally for baking because you never have too much chocolate right I mean it is Easter. Confession, my least favourite part of baking is lining the tin. I don't know why, it just really bugs me. So what I've got is this new um, foil lined baking parchment. It's quite heavy duty which I think is going to work quite well. Um, I've greased the bottom of the tin using butter and I've just laid it in there so you can see it fits quite nicely. This can be quite a tricky recipe to get out of the tin. I've often had to kind of like tip it over onto a chopping board. I'm going to use one layer of this parchment with foil. I'm going to grease this and then I'm going to top it with foil as well, leaving plenty over the sides so that I can grip it to lift it out tomorrow. Yep, that tray is well and truly lined and greased. All that's left is for us to pour the brownie mix into the tin. Okay, it's quite heavy, so wish me luck. If you weren't adding in the chocolate orange pieces, this would be a really good time to put in either pieces of crunchy bar or twirl or basically whatever you've got in the house. I'm going to be adding a dark chocolate orange. So all I'm going to do is just dunk these in and I'll use my little silicone spatula to push them in further so that they're not sticking out from the surface of the brownie mix. I'm going to keep the middle because that's the best part. So they're all in now and I also have a bag of the chocolate orange pieces and the milk chocolate. So they're going in as well. Yeah, we don't like to scrimp on chocolate. These are a pretty special Easter bake, so. So that is the chocolate orange 
huge brownie mix ready to go in the oven. So it's going in at 180 degrees and I'm going to put it in for 20 minutes. I'm going to check it, turn it around and put it in for another five and then keep checking it every five minutes from then onwards. Our brownie has had 20 minutes in the oven and you can see it's starting to firm a nice firm top and it's also started to crack a little bit at the sides, so that's perfectly fine. I've just turned it round and I'm going to pop it back in now for a further five minutes. Check it again. We have to 25 minutes. As you can see, it's starting to come away at the edges, which is a good sign. But when I give it a bit of a shake, you can see that it's still quite liquid in the middle. So we do want it to have a little bit of mobility. It still needs to be a little bit wobbly, but at the moment it's just a little bit too much. So I'm gonna give it another three minutes or so. Our brownie has now had 28 minutes in the oven, 20 minutes in the first direction, then turn it around and a further eight. And if you can tell just now, when I take it out, it's difficult to see, but it still has quite a bit of flexibility. But the most important thing is it's coming away at the sides. And obviously we've got this lovely, nice crust. So that should be just about it. So that's it for our chocolate brownie for today. I'm really happy with how it's looking. Um, I'll get it sliced up tomorrow. Just gonna leave it for now and um, try not to nibble away at the edges. Um, but thank you so much for joining and um, I hope that you're going to give this a try as well and if you do please send me photos it's always really nice to see what you've been up to what you've tried that I've suggested it means a great deal to me to get kind of your likes and comments so please do give me a thumbs up and if you like what I've been posting so far subscribe to my channel I've got some really cool things coming up in the future so the brownie has been sitting in the tin overnight and I mean it's lovely and cool now. I've just given my hands a really good wash. It's time to get it sliced and delivered to all the neighbours. Getting it out of the tin can actually be a little bit of a tricky process. So if you remember I double lined it with the idea that I could hopefully, with a bit of luck, take hold of both sides and yeah, just lift it quite easily. Right, here we go. Moment of truth. <laughs> Straight into the middle. I'm sure there's a scientific way of marking this out and uh, and slicing, but frankly, I just want you to see. Yeah, there we go. You can see the orange segments and the chocolate orange pieces we put in there. 